Welcome, Crypto Gucci, to the Wholesome Crypto Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, how's it going, Rudy? Uh, honored to be on your show. Uh, looking forward to kind of diving deeper today. But just wanted to tell you that I'm a huge fan of your show. I uh, love what you're doing. I think you've had some great guests on here and uh, really excited about today. Thank you. Yeah, and you've also been like someone I've been following for a long time. I love your threads. I love what you're doing. I love what you're contributing to the community. And it's useful. I mean, also recently, congratulations. You just hit 30K subscribers. I'm glad to do episode 30 with you. Oh, yeah, it's fun. So, you know, 30K for episode 30, I think it's awesome. Um, if you would asked me a year ago, I would have never told you I would have had 30K followers. <laughs> but it's just uh, great. You know, I love getting information out to the community. And I uh, just want to make sure that people in the Ethereum ecosystem can have a, a good place to come and learn. Yeah. And it's definitely taken in with open arms. So thank you. <laughs> And it's 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 an interesting story because like crypto has been out for a while. This is kind of something you've been working on for the past uh, year or so. But before even getting into the crypto space, uh, loving crypto or <laughs> Ethereum, what was Crypto Gucci doing before ever even hearing about Bitcoin? Uh, so I guess I started out. So let me just give you kind of my like passion for like computers and IT. Mm -hmm. uh, it all started as a kid. So I remember it was either in like fourth or fifth grade. Uh, my family got its first um, PC and I just immediately fell in love. And so from a very young age, I knew that I wanted to go into something computer related uh, for my career. So uh, I got our first PC and then the internet came along in like 95 or 96 where I was. And as a kid, I was always, you know, just tearing up and breaking computers, but <laughs> Uh, the fun, the fun of it was being able to start over, format a computer, and fix it. Yeah, and so that's where my passion kind of fell in. Uh, went to college, got a degree in uh, management information systems, and then started my first job uh, as a programmer. And so um, was a programmer for several years. Um, stayed in the IT space, and uh, eventually now I've kind of made my way up to an IT director. So nice. you know, kind of wear a lot of different hats on a daily basis. Um, you know, anything from like business acquisition, you know, in the wow. IT space, all the way down to uh, developing mobile apps for clients. So uh, my passion's always been for technology. And it's just been, you know, really fun, especially with the way that the space is moving right now. I know it's so fast. And there's so many things going on. And yeah, like you said, like living in a tech space building I mean, for me, I uh, hits home, like I love building computers. For some reason, I love reformatting them. Like, I don't know why I used to as a kid a lot, I'm like, oh, fresh new windows, like with custom design, <laughs> I'm gonna definitely get this on my computer because it's cool. And yeah, I think that's the nice thing of being able to just start over fresh, right? Mm -hmm. And then like dual booting too. And I was like, oh, Windows and Linux. I'm like, I can do anything now. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I, mean, I used to always just like play around with different like Linux flavors, you know, like, okay, what do I want to learn now? Which one do I want to play with, right? Exactly uh it's so funny so then i guess when um when crypto first came uh into your life it wasn't was it like a weird thing for you was it something that you thought was hey this is kind of an odd technology who cares about it or was it automatically clicking in your mind saying this is going to be the next big thing i have to dive into it yeah it's kind of interesting how i came across crypto so i guess when i really started kind of diving in <clears throat> was in uh 2014 um, I really started kind of researching Bitcoin and was, you know, coming across it. And I thought, it's like, hey, I'm going to try to learn how to mine some Bitcoin. Nice. And so I really started to <clears throat> do some research in the space. And then um, I really kind of never, never started mining. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, there really wasn't good guides out there. Um, I didn't want to put in the time to learn how to do everything. So I kind of researched it halfway. And then interest kind of fell off. So I was like, mm, you know, this isn't really mainstream. Is it really going to make it? Um, I might, you know, come back and check on it later. And so didn't really do anything yeah. in crypto from like 2014 to 2017. And then in 2017, um, I was having a conversation with my brother-in-law one day. And he actually knew kind of a friend of a friend um, in the Ethereum Foundation. <laughs> nice. And 
he would tell my brother-in-law, he's like, hey, you should really check out Ethereum. It's just like Bitcoin, but it's programmable. And you should check out like what all you can do with smart contracts. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I heard that with my IT background, I was like, this sounds like something that's going to be super disruptive and something that just like really interested me. Nice. So 2017 was when I really kind of just started diving into everything crypto. I wanted to get my hands on any kind of article, any kind of technical document. And just really started soaking up all the knowledge every chance I could. So it was really cool because um, there was just so much out there. And I was just like, this is going to change the world. And I was convinced in 2017. So, you know, that's when I came across, you know, here's the Bitcoin, here's Ethereum, here's the difference between, you know, proof of work, proof of stake. And uh, it was just great. I just loved all the problems that crypto was trying to solve. I know it's like it's the best part about that uh, about Ethereum, especially is like all the public good coming out, not just you know quick uh, quick cash grabs. It's also like people are trying to do a lot of public good with it, and I love seeing that. I love uh, hearing more and more about those projects. Yeah, it was great. I mean, there's just so much crypto was trying to do to help society as a whole, mm -hmm. and that just really resonated with me. It's amazing. And uh, so then, as you were learning about this. Was it was it something you knew you wanted to contribute to and develop into? I mean, I know you're reading as much as you can about it, but what a uh, what were you, you thinking at that time? Like, okay, how do I how do I play my cards into crypto? Yeah, it's kind of funny. So you know, I started out in 2017, and I had just my personal Twitter account, and I was interacting with all these like anon accounts <laughs> online, and I was like, mm, I should probably make you know my own like kind of fun. Uh, and on account. And so that's how, you know, Crypto Gucci was born. Nice. And so the backstory of Crypto Gucci is kind of funny. It started out, I was like, there were so many just crypto meme accounts out there. And I was like, I'm going to make one too that's going to be fun. So I love Gucci Mane as the rapper. So I was like, I'm going to be Crypto Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Take that meme all for yourself. That's good. And so that's when the Crypto Gucci account was born. It was originally created just to have a way to communicate with other people in the crypto space. Um, you know, it grew into kind of what it is now. Um, I got to thinking, I was like, well, what I could do with this is there's really, you know, a need to get like precise information out there that's not so technical to people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, with my IT background, if I can break down very technical concepts and put it just into everyday language that people can understand, I thought that would bring value. And I did it just purely just to help the community. You know, I didn't want to get paid off of it. I didn't want to do a paid group or anything like that. So that's why my content's always been free, just because at the end of the day, I want people to be able to learn and just have a place that they can go um, and enjoy all the things in the Theorem ecosystem. And it's definitely well received. Uh, I look forward to your, th your threads all the time. I was honored to be mentioned in it before, too. So thank you for that. Oh, yeah, it was great. I mean, I remember coming across your podcast one day. I was like, oh, there's some like, you know, new guy in the space. So I was like, I started listening to your episodes. And I was like, oh, he makes like some really good content. And so <laughs> thank you. I kind of went back and listened to you, like your old recordings. And, you know, it was just great. You know, I love what you're doing with your brand. I think that you're, you know, a lot in the Ethereum community and all the different things you're doing with your interviews. But um, they're great. I've just I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them. I appreciate it. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I feel honored. Uh, so that you're in creating these threads, you're working on it slowly, you don't have a huge following, but obviously now you do. But back then, like, how, how was that affecting your daily life? I feel like as you grow, it's almost like you're having more responsibility to the to the community, almost like people are expecting versus you were just doing it for fun. So how's, how's that growth been for you? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question. And, you know, it's always tricky, like the bigger following you get, because you do feel um, kind of like you have a responsibility back to the community uh, mm -hmm. as your following gets larger, um, almost like guilt if you don't put out good content for them <laughs> because, because, you know, people are relying on you. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I mean, like crypto is truly my passion. And so, yes, it's time consuming. Yes, there's never enough hours in the day to get out the content. But I truly enjoy, you know, putting out the content, putting out the threads. And I guess like a little bit of backstory on the threads, yeah. uh, how they started was, you know, I was looking around. It's like there's so much, you know, so many different Twitter accounts or so many different websites and places for media. You know, it's like I wish there was like one like go to hub 
that covers, you know, everything going on in crypto or Ethereum. And, you know, a lot of places do like really good things for like a particular section of the ecosystem. Like you might have somebody who's doing Ethereum development and has everything or somebody just in the NFTs or somebody just in a DeFi. But I was like, can I get some place that's going to kind of encompass everything into one? And that's when I started doing my threads. I was like, maybe I can do threads for people to where, hey, they can come to my profile and then see everything that's going on in like a, a clear, concise place that's easy to read. So originally started out with, you know, NFT, Ethereum and DeFi threads. And that was just my goal. I was compiling information and then trying to put it back in words that's, Mm -hmm. you know, easy to understand, easy to read and not very technical. Um, And then apparently the community fell in love with it. I was kind of in shock because I really wasn't expecting to get the response I did. That's amazing because I mean, you're solving. (laughs) That's one of the greatest ways to create something, right? You solve your own problem. So you solved your own problem of needing information and you're not the only one that wants that. Apparently. Yeah, that's kind of funny. It's like I wanted somewhere to go for information and I ended up just creating it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're the go-to spot for it. And then, um, mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to, I wanted to know like more about the difficulty in creating those threads because like you said, it's not easy just reading about all that information, but also compiling it and making it easy to digest. So I love to learn, like for me, for a while, I thought it was, just a bot making these, not well, like making uh, all these threads. I mean, it's impossible for a human to do it, but I think you're doing it yourself, right? Yes, no bot, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've actually had several people reach out to me asking, it's like, hey, can I have a copy of your bot? And I was like, well, that's me. Um, <laughs> you can't copy me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it started out, it was super time intensive. Um, I mean, I, there's no telling how many hours I was putting in every week just to create my, you know, weekly summary threads for like NFTs and, and Ethereum, you know, over time, you know, I found out ways that I could like, you know, cut slivers of time off to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's a lot more efficient now than when I first started, but it is still time consuming, of course. But you know, at the end of the day, I do enjoy doing it. And I'm just trying to figure out, is there anything else I can give back to the community that they need or want? Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, I think what you're doing is amazing because we're in a day and age where information has to be translated as fast as possible into our minds. Like we have memes now, which translates a lot of information really quickly in a simple picture. And I've, and it's just like, what you're doing is just like bringing all that information to us as fast as we can into a single Twitter thread that I can read without having to scroll through the rest of Twitter to understand what's going on. So thank you for that. Um, but more into like understanding how you have the time for this i know you have you know your own personal life and now you also have a crypto life but how does like crypto gucci remain sane during times when you're taking a break what do you do for fun what are some hobbies that you have that's kind of a you know a rest period yeah yeah i mean like that's definitely you know something that's needed because i feel like you know mental health is so important in this space and people Mm -hmm. can get burnt out and it's kind of rampant sometimes so I try to make sure that I take time, you know, for my family and for myself. But as, as far as hobbies, um, well, I love anything, you know, like tech related. So I'm always kind of like trying to figure out something that's going on in the tech world, you know, just kind of for fun. Uh, I love to work out. Um, nice. I've been working out for a long time, about three days a week. Nice. Um, I used to have a ton of hobbies and then I had kids. And so <laughs> now I have to be um, kind of picky with them. Uh I love to fish, but I don't have as much time for it now. Uh, we live uh, near a lake, and so I love going out like on a boat and just kind of relaxing. That's but awesome. uh, you know, most besides that, just spending a lot of time with uh, with family and with my two kids. Um, they're a joy to be around, and it just makes it uh, makes it so much fun, kind of seeing like life through their eyes. <laughs> do your kids and your family know about your Twitter account? Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, my five-year-old's a big fan of all the different NFTs. He's like, "Ooh, monkey!" Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll he'll just like to like sit on the computer and like scroll NFTs with me. I love so that. That's, fun. that's so awesome. I mean, yeah, that's kind of wild too to think of like like your kids or like like people you know, growing up now, they're growing up with this technology as a almost a norm. I think for oh, us, yeah. I mean, there's no telling what, you know, my five-year-old's going to know by the time he's 15, you know, yeah. 10 years from now. Um, there, there won't be, you know, you know, lo- no longer like this ecosystem or that e- ecosystem. It's all probably just going to be one. <laughs> it's going to be, I mean, 
I don't know. Do you really think it's going to be a bunch of, I mean, all into one ecosystem or there's going to be multiple? I, I, for me, I, I feel like humans can't help but have multiple ecosystems. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, yeah, I agree. It'll be multiple ecosystems, mm-hmm. but I guess it'll be kind of more mainstream which is where I was going. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to kind of think, you know, the generations now, or I'll call them the, you know, Fortnite, Minecraft, <laughs> Roblox generations. <laughs> and so, like, to me, the kids already live in their own metaverse. They just don't call it that. True. And I, me, me, when I was growing up playing video games, I can feel that effect just living in a different universe in, in video games. That Diablo 2 was my thing. So, <laughs> Oh, I love Diablo. So, like, going down the Diablo trail real quick. So, you know, like, Diablo 4 is coming out next year. Are you still an avid gamer? Uh, I feel like I want to get it because it's nostalgic for me, but I barely played Diablo 3, let alone will I play this. So... I don't know. It depends how they do it. If they if they can make it feel a little bit more uh, dark and grungy, how it was in Diablo 2, yeah. then maybe. Yeah, I feel you. I played a lot of Diablo 3, but Diablo 2 was the best of all time. Yeah, for sure. Well, if, it, if you get it, let me know. Then I'll, I'll probably play with you just because... <laughs> we'll see. What, what we'll have to do is we'll have to do a wholesome live stream That'd of Gucci awesome. 3 playing Diablo 4. Uh, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> We got to do definitely more collabs like that. So also <laughs> <laughs> definitely let's see. So now that, um, I mean, this is, again, you're working on your threads, you have a full-time job, you are finding a good balance between living your life and helping out the crypto community. Uh, uh, do you have any, you know, plans to where crypto Gucci is going? I mean, the threads are, you know, awesome and stuff, but I kind of want to see what, what you're thinking of for its future. Yeah, yeah. So I actually do have some more plans, I guess, for for the Crypto Gucci brand, if you want to call it that. Um, <laughs> I actually did a Twitter poll, I guess, a little bit over a week ago because I was like, okay, I have these plans in my mind, but what does the community truly want? Mm-hmm. And so I basically did a poll that said, would you like me to launch a newsletter, uh, ETH resources website, or other, you know, and you can leave comments. And so kind of my overwhelming majority Everybody's like, we want an ETH resources website. And I was kind of shocked because I thought everybody would want a newsletter. But uh, deep down, that's what I really wanted to launch. And so, yeah, in the coming, you know, weeks um, or early this summer, Mm -hmm. I plan on launching uh, an ETH resource website. And I want it to just be a place that's kind of all encompassing on everything in the Ethereum ecosystem. So, you know, everything from... Um, DeFi related things, NFTs, Ethereum development, um, L2 news, um, Mm -hmm. how to get into L2s, just anything that someone would want to know to kind of get started and then make it just in an easy format to where somebody can have kind of a central hub where everything's located and it's easy to read and get started. So that's kind of the goal to where I want to take it. Um, Just like my Twitter account tweets, I want to keep everything uh, free. I don't want to charge for anything. I just want to be able to have a place that I can kind of like give back to the community again and that they can come and enjoy and just continue to learn more. That's amazing. And uh, you're right. There's like, that's so needed. And there's already so much information out there, of course. But I think that your method, your style of making it digestible and your amazing process of compiling information will make it truly an awesome place just to go there and know that it's one reliable to not um you know it's it's genuine information that's helpful towards people and not kind of trying to sway anyone's thoughts because again this industry a lot of it is like oh you should definitely get this nft project but i got 50 of them first just so i'm telling you now to buy some so my own value goes up it's just like oh (laughs) it's it's thankful it's like i'm thankful for like what you do which is you know thinking of the people first before anything else yeah yeah i I appreciate that and that's kind of you know i never want to use my following to hurt people Mm -hmm. or to hurt the community because you you do see it once people start getting on big following sometimes you know they abuse it or they try to start you know pushing things or shilling things on their platforms and you know my goal has just been always to put out uh, information in a non-biased way to where people can make their decisions for themselves and just really to inform the community. And um, it's been a lot of fun so far and hopefully I can continue to do that in a way that people enjoy. But yeah, my, my biggest thing is I just never want to take advantage of anybody. Um, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. 
I love that crypto is all about the community. And I think that's what makes crypto so special. Just the bonds that you see here and just the nature that most people just truly care about the technology and the people that are doing good things in the space. Exactly. And I'm so pumped for that. And I'm so pumped for Web3 in general. And I'm excited to see like what else is being built on it. Because I know right, like, right now we're in the phase of Elon Musk purchasing Twitter. And we're also in the phase of a Web3 decentralized uh, like platforms. And it's funny to me, like, I just got this thought right now, but like so many people uh, of, on crypto are on crypto Twitter. And a lot of us talk about decentralization and using different platforms, but we still use Twitter. And then like, there's like, I'm excited to see like what upcoming projects are going to kind of maybe take over Twitter or is Elon Musk going to adapt blockchain into Twitter so we kind of get what we want. And I don't know, I'm kind of excited to see what happens on that end. And I'm kind of wondering what your thoughts on as someone who, you know, uses Twitter. Is there any other projects you're excited about? about that's going to kind of like reshape that social media industry for us? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question. You know, I'm really curious to see where Elon takes Twitter. Um, but, you know, another thing that's going on right now. So you have, you know, Stanny, uh, you know, the founder of Ave mm -hmm. and, you know, he's making, you know, Lens Protocol. And yep. I'm really curious to see, you know, how that's going to go being kind of like a decentralized version of Twitter. Um, is it going to turn into like a Twitter competitor? You know, does Twitter try to kind of go more down the Web3 rabbit hole and maybe add in, you know, sign in with your Ethereum wallet or sign in with your ENS? Um, I just think there's so many cool things that could happen. I'm just curious to see, you know, where's the world about to go? I hope it's more down the Web3 path, but I guess, you know, time will tell. Yeah, exactly. And there's like some other projects I interviewed, uh, GM. GM.xyz, uh, Mike McGinnis, I interviewed him with his social media platform. And I'm excited to see where he takes it. And I'm also excited for Lens Protocol. It seems to get a lot of amazing feedback recently. But Yeah, GM.xyz is awesome too. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of fun. I like the look and feel of everything. Like I think they could really have potential in the space. So I'm, I'm excited about that one too. Same. Uh, so now that we're um, in the social media phase i kind of want to know what is your crypto pet peeves mm, yeah that, that that's a good one um probably i guess some crypto pet peeves um part of it is i'll, I'll go to like the people problem first you know there's a lot of scammers and toxic people in the space yeah um even though we have a ton of good so to me it's like i tell people it doesn't take any more energy like to be nice and contribute than it does to be toxic and tear somebody down yeah so just the toxicity sometimes in the space, you know, that's a pet peeve of mine. Um, I just don't think there's like, you know, a lot of room for it. We should be a tight knit community that's building each other up and trying to advance everything together. Cause I think it would be better, you know, in the long run. And then probably <laughs> uh, another pet peeve is probably relating back to security, but um, hopefully it's to a place where I can help teach people about security more in the future, because I hate to see people, you know, get scammed. Yeah. Um, I feel like in the NFT space that you see, you know, oh, no, I lost my board ape the other day or a discord gets hacked and somebody goes in and clicks a link and then That's... all their ETH is drained. They lose all their NFTs. And um, I just I hate that we're still at that point in the space. But, you know, there's scammers everywhere in society. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully, you know, we can do a good job of educating people like, hey, you know, this is dangerous. Don't do these, you know, X things to keep yourself safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think as, you know, more information gets out, you know, people will be safer. But, um, you know, you never want to see somebody get hurt in crypto and then leave the space. Exactly. And it's definitely, I mean, as with any new technology, the hacking me mechanisms and the social engineering mechanisms get more and more sophisticated as the technology grows. It's just kind of natural. And it's definitely wild to see like that happen. And that anyone listening in, and you're into crypto and you don't have a physical hardware wallet yet, please get one. There's great ones out there, Grid Plus, Ledger, Tre Trezor, whatever it is, please, please get one of those immediately. Yes, yeah, so that's like, that should be your first purchase in crypto. Yeah. And I know some people think they're expensive, but Compared to, you know, money you're going to put into a crypto wallet, it's the best, probably best investment you can to kind of safeguard everything. Exactly. Uh, so then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel that same way. And back into like education on crypto, are you the 
crypto guy amongst your friend group and family? Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of the go-to person, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm always, you know, sending people articles or talking about different things. Um, it's a lot of fun because I guess I've turned a lot of friends and family mm -hmm. to the crypto scene. And I'm kind of showing them like, hey, this is real. This is something that's going to be disruptive. Like you should really, you know, think about investing in it and you should really be following the space. So it's uh, it's fun conversations because once you see people um, that understand crypto, it like when that moment clicks with them, they're yeah. like, wow, this is really going to be disruptive. And they, and they understand. Yep, exactly. And it's like, it's like for me too, it's always, it's hard to explain sometimes. Um exactly what it is and i think i think what it is is hard to explain versus why it's so important because if you tell someone oh you're gonna own your data and have complete access to it where no one else can uh hack it break it no one else can change it. its read write access is all under your control of your information and i usually like like using like health records as a good example it starts clicking the why immediately but the how it all works and what it is is still kind of like on a technical level it's still very complex so i'm definitely excited for uh, more information on your website in the future <laughs> to share those links <laughs> yeah hopefully i can find some good things to put out so uh for anybody listening today if you have anything you want to hear reach out to rudy or to me and maybe we can figure out some good ways to get information back to you yes <laughs> um so then yeah you're you're the crypto guy. I think I feel that a lot, especially being in IT. And I'm sure if you had a lot of different experiences in the industry, I know social media has definitely kind of like changed your perspective on what it's like to be, you know, looked at as a person of information, of resource. Has there been any like times during your your threads or your postings where you just maybe had an experience where someone was saying like, like thank you so much for this or um kind of almost changed someone's life you know, inadvertently like how's that been for you yeah surprisingly i have a lot of people that are like constantly dm me or just sending comments on my threads you know saying hey thank you you know you saved me so much time um you just really see a lot of good people that are really thankful uh you know for the information that i'm putting out for the community and, and it makes you feel good because you know that's my goal at the end of the day yeah. i just want to provide a service you know free of charge to people to where Hopefully they did learn something and get something out of it. So um, it's great. I mean, I, I love interacting with the community. So anytime somebody reaches out to me, I try to take time, you know, to, you know, say something back and uh, really get to know people. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, really, I would say 95% of my interactions with people on Twitter are very positive. And there's just a ton of good people out here who hopefully enjoy the information. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's definitely useful. I remember someone uh, in the past week tweeting about they read your threads in an Australian accent. So I was so excited to do this just to see uh, what is what is his accent. It's, it's a smooth Southern voice. So they, it's glad it's, it's, I'm definitely gonna start reading your threads now in your voice. So that's exciting and awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely not from Australia, but uh, <laughs> definitely a Southern accent. So I'm sure people can kind of hear it, uh, but it's fun. Yeah, I grew up in the South and um I call the South my home mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> um, now let's see for my uh, last favorite question. Um, you know, being through all this experience, uh, what is your favorite wholesome crypto moment? Mm, there's so many good episodes. Let me think, but something that happened in your life and your industry that made you feel good, like kind of warmed your heart in the crypto world. Um, as far as like wholesome crypto moments. I loved the two podcasts with Superfiz and Paul Brody of e &Y. Those were just awesome because it's two really great guys um, that are super involved in the community. And when you hear them talk, you can just feel their passion and you can see that they truly want to help people as well. Absolutely. Um, I love those two episodes. Um, I love Superfiz when he goes into you know all the beacon chain uh, health things. Uh, he is a big uh, person I follow daily, and uh, I enjoyed you know hearing hearing more from him on your your podcast. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad. I'm glad it was useful. <laughs> That's the whole thing, right? It's like there's so many amazing people here that are doing amazing things, and 
you get so caught up in the tech or the value of crypto, like the dollar value. And it's always about, oh, when should I trade? When should I buy? When should I sell? But I mean, it's all about, it's not, it's not about that ultimately. It's about the technology and the people behind it that are building it because the crypto that you're buying is created by people. You know, it's, it's human made. And we need to know like the humans behind different projects or behind different resources of information like you know who are all these people that are feeding us this information we need to know if their intentions are good or if their intentions are malicious like we don't know us we ask yeah definitely i mean it's a good point because you know not everybody's intentions are true mm -hmm. but i feel like at the end of the day especially in the ethereum community it feels like so many people truly care and mm -hmm. do have good intentions that always leaves you with a good feeling at the end of the day you know there's just so much going on in the space right now that's positive and you know, a lot of people want to talk about price, but, you know, at the end of the day, how I view crypto is, you know, crypto wasn't made to get you rich. You know, it was made to change the world and to make it a better place. And I truly believe it's accomplishing that. It absolutely is. And I mean, of course, every everyone needs money to survive and that's how life works now. But it really is. I think it's bringing money, more money into our own pockets because we're getting to own things like our own data because you know nothing in life is free everything we do on google has a charge everything we do on twitter has a charge even though we use it for free we're giving something you know of ourselves so in a world where we get to control all of our own data and you know provide what we want to provide we can get reimbursed for that somehow so it's, it's just awesome seeing it all play out and come to life definitely awesome so again Thank you so much, Crypto Gucci, for coming on the show today. It's uh, amazing to have amazing to have you. Amazing to learn more about you. Uh, you're doing a great service for the community. Thirty thousand plus people. I'm sure you're going to start breaking tens of thousands <laughs> soon. So, uh, your yeah, your work speaks for itself, and I continue to look forward to your weekly threads and look forward to what you're building next yeah no I, I appreciate it rudy um you know just thanks for having me on here today it's been a ton of fun um it's been good you know getting to know you more and you know just right back at you with everything that you're creating you know i love your podcast i love everything that you're doing i think that you're providing just such a great service for the space so if you're listening and you're not following rudy or wholesome crypto make sure you do that right now because i'm sure he's going to be having a lot of more fun people come on and if you want to learn, uh, definitely this is the place to be with Rudy. Thank you so much. Uh, it was an amazing chat. Thank you so much, Crypto Gucci. All right. Thanks, Rudy. I really appreciate it. See you, everyone.